Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Juana Udo. Every week I try to show, share content to help you master your personal finance and grow your wealth. So if this is your first time here, thank you very much for being here. And for all my subscribers, I want to thank you all for being here. So today's topic is on how you can leverage banks. Now, a little disclaimer here. Um, I work in the financial industry. I work for a bank. So um, anything I share here is just my opinion. Um, has nothing to do with the bank. And also, I am not a you know financial advisor or a tax professional. I'm just a regular guy on YouTube sharing content with you. So um, you might find this topic might be a little biased, um, just because I work in in a bank. But I just want to be upfront and let you know that um, you know everything I say here it's um, meant to help you out. So let's jump right into it. So the reason why I said um, you know you should you should be able to leverage banks to help you achieve your personal finance goals. Um, most people misconstrue what banks are. Most people think that banks are evil, banks are bad. Um, something you should understand is a bank is a for-profit um, business, so they're there to make a profit. So anything the bank does is in the bank's interest, okay, to generate profit, just like you do things to benefit you personally and to benefit your finances okay so a bank is a business and the goal of a business is to turn a profit all right so now there are good banks there are bad banks just like everything else you have to do your due diligence you have to do your research and luckily with the internet you can do a google search for banks in your area and you can compare you know different banks um, now depending on the way the bank is set up so if it's a brick and mortar bank um, they might offer not too many attractive rates um, just for the fact that they have a higher overhead. Um, internet banks or online banks basically um, can offer you a little better interest rates on your money because they don't have the physical, you know, brick and mortar locations. All right. So it depends on what you're looking for and how comfortable you are with banking online or do you prefer the face-to-face -face, you know in-person um, service so now that we have that all, uh, out of the way so i want to show you how you know you can leverage banks to build your uh, personal wealth and you know leave a lot of um, money out there okay so first and foremost banks offer different products all right so banks offer you anywhere from checking accounts from savings accounts uh, from money market accounts, from certificates of deposits, all right, um, home equity lines of credit, home equity loans, personal loans, business loans, business lines of credit, business credit cards, personal credit cards. So there are a plethora of products that banks offer. All right, it's getting a little dark here, so I'm just going to pull my shade. So sorry about that. So um, banks offer different services, okay, and different products. That you can tap into so the easiest way or the first thing you need to do is to make sure that you're financially sound which means you have a strong credit okay so your credit is the first step you want to make sure that you have a decent credit so that way when you go to um, apply for a loan or a line of credit with a bank you'll be in a better position okay you want to also make sure that you you know take good care of your finances um, which also will affect your credit because if you have any uh, late payments or charge-offs or bankruptcy or any public records, that might also hinder you from being able to leverage a bank. So basically, an example would be um, on how to leverage a bank is, for instance, if you have a home, all right, you can tap into your home's equity by applying for a home equity line of credit. Now, basically, um, you know, it is based, you're pretty much securing, um, pledging your property as collateral to, to be able to tap into the equity in your home. So basically you end up applying, you go through underwriting, and then the bank approves you to have a home equity line of credit. Now, depending on the bank, there are different, um, you know, guidelines and, you know, things that they have to comply with before they can grant you that provided you have equity in your home, you know and everything lines up your credit lines up your income lines up and every other thing lines up 
there shouldn't be any reason why you shouldn't qualify for home equity line of credit. So once you have your home equity line of credit, what most people do is they just sit on the home equity line of credit. They don't use it. So it's just like having um, a supercar parked in your garage, but you don't use it. It's just sitting there rusting away. Okay. It's just sitting there idle. And that's the worst thing you want to do with a sports car. You want to make sure you drive it. Okay. You want to make sure you use it. Same thing with a home equity line of credit. You want to use it. Now, what most people do with their home equity line of credit is they, they tap into their home equity line of credit to buy consumables. So they buy a car or they take a vacation or they buy appliances or they do all sorts of things that basically is just a liability. It's just a waste. Okay. None of those things put money in your pocket. So you want to make sure that when you tap into your home equity line of credit, you are using it to acquire income producing assets. For instance, investment real estate, all right? This is how most people have been able to build their wealth through real estate. So having a home equity line of credit and being able to utilize it to build your wealth is the best way to go. So for instance, like I said, if you have a home and you have a home equity line of credit, do your due diligence, okay? You can tap into it and use it to acquire um, an investment property okay as long as your numbers are okay and that property cash flows and pays for itself then you're fine there's nothing to be afraid of okay now don't get me wrong every investment has some risk so i'm not sitting here trying to tell you that if you invest in an investment property that there's no risk everything has a risk life is a risk you know it's a risky proposition all right so but you try to mitigate your risk which is why I said you need to do your due diligence. You need to understand what you're doing before you, you know, invest in investment properties. So basically, if you if you tap into your home equity line of credit, you can leverage that and use it to buy um, an investment property that's you know churns out cash flow every single month for you, and it's able to pay down your home equity line of credit now the way the home equity line of credit works is almost like a credit card so you use it there's a draw phase and there's a payback period so during the draw period okay which in some cases lasts for 10 years okay you are allowed to tap into your home equity line of credit and use it as you want so you can use it and you pay it back and bring it back to zero all right so during the first 10 10 years you're only paying back the interest all right so depending on what interest rate you were qualified for every single month you get a you, you know you get a bill and it's just interest payments now you can pay back the principal as well okay so which means if you pay back the principal you have that money available again for you to do the same thing so you take the first round you buy an investment property and then the property cash flows hopefully you've done your work right okay so um now you're paying back the home equity line of credit back to zero but guess what the money is available again for you to do the same thing. So you rinse and repeat. You do the same thing. You buy another property. You do the same thing. You do another property. You do the same thing. So in 10 years, you can technically own 10 investment properties. Now, let's assume that each property, you know, cash flows, worst case scenario, $500 a month. So now you have, you know, 10 properties, okay, cash flowing $500 a month. All right, that's a nice passive income coming to you. But initially, it will not be passive because you have to put in the work to run your investment properties. Now, probably when you get to a particular level, you can turn over the management of your investment properties to a management company that will handle that for you. So that's one way you can leverage a bank. OK, banks are always seen as evil. Banks are always seen as bad. Yes, if you don't know how to play the game, yes, you will get in trouble with the banks. I've, I've been guilty of that, even though I work for a bank now, but before I worked for a bank, I had no financial knowledge. I thought I knew everything. I thought I was financially savvy, but unfortunately, most people are not financially, financially savvy. Most people don't know how to you know, manage their personal finance. I'm still learning. I'm still struggling. I'm not saying I'm perfect, okay? But because I'm so passionate about, you know, uh, mastering personal finance and also growing wealth okay that's why i started this channel to help you so if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of my latest videos so let's continue now that's one way you can leverage a bank okay 
there are other ways you can leverage your bank. For instance, if you have a business, okay, you can apply for a, a business line of credit. Now, having a business line of credit is essential, it's key, because every business goes through a cycle, okay? So businesses go through a cycle. And you might be in a phase where, let's say you're just starting out with your business, so you're trying to build your business, and you know, uh, being able to handle your payroll, um, depend on what business you're in. So, for instance, if you own a restaurant, you know you 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 definitely need um, money to be able to you know buy your um, inventory um, for your payroll, for your utilities, for taxes, and all that. So, having a line of credit on the side will help you manage situations where you have a dip in sales or you have a dip in business. Like we just went through the health crisis, and over a hundred thousand plus businesses went bankrupt okay just because they never had a cushion you know to 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 safeguard them in situations where the economy turns you know bad all right so if most of those businesses had lines of credit if they had a nice uh, cushion of cash then they would have been able to weather some of the um situations that businesses were going through because of the health crisis all right so that's another way how businesses can leverage a bank and use the bank's money okay to be able to tide them through very bad situations all right so don't see banks as being evil don't see banks are bad i know banks can be very brutal sometimes but you have to learn to play the game okay the banks banks are actually one of the most regulated industries okay i'm, I'm speaking specifically about the united states so if you're watching this video from africa or europe or south america um i'm sure they have regulations for banks in your in your countries um, but i'm specifically speaking about the united states because that's what i know all right so don't see banks as evil okay make the bank your friend okay if you if you play by the rules okay it's just like playing um a, a game you have to you know learn the game you have to understand the rules you have to know what you can do and what you can't do same thing applies to your finances same thing applies to dealing with banks you have to know what you're doing you have to play by the rules because banks play by the rules all right so if you know how to play by the rules you'll be successful and that's what i that's why i started this channel and that's why i've been sharing lots of content with people just to enlighten you and educate you on your personal finance and how to you know leverage your personal finance to grow your wealth unfortunately most people concentrate on 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 liabilities they think are assets so your main focus going forward today should be how can you increase your asset base okay and not just your asset base but income producing assets so real estate stocks bonds dividend paying you know stocks dividend paying bonds um you know precious metals uh, starting a business um so you should concentrate right now and seize this opportunity on growing your asset column okay so just like a business as a as an individual you also have an income statement you also have a balance sheet and you also have a net worth so if you're not sure of all these terms i'm using right now make sure you check my channel for videos i have already made on things like you know how to calculate your net worth okay so once you have uh, uh once you grasp this concept of having um of, of mastering your personal finance okay um then everything else will fall in line all right so if you if you need more help if you need more assistance with how to you know dominate and master your personal finance i'm going to leave a link to um a, a digital course that i just created um it's a very short course but it's very you know straight to the point it's got everything that you need to be able to get yourself started so i'm not claiming that it's the best out there but I put a lot of time and effort into creating this uh, digital course for you. So please make sure you um, check the links below this uh, video. Um, click on the link, sign up for the course. Um, I'm giving people a, a 30 day money back. So if you, if you feel you didn't get anything from it, no harm, I'll give you back your money. I'm not here trying to fleece people. I'm just trying to you know create content that benefits people. So. Make sure you check the description below for my course. It's called Personal Finance Domination. So make sure you click the link below and check it out, okay? So going forward, all you should concentrate on is 
growing your asset column just like robert kiyosaki said if you read his book rich dad poor dad okay the wealthy people only concentrate on the asset column because they understand the game all right the more assets you have that's producing income for you the better off you will be then you don't have to trade your time for money all right it's unfortunate that the system that we have today does not really help people with their personal finance so i thank you very much for being here i don't want to drag this uh, video too long because i'm getting ready to go to the gym um that's another topic for another day um taking care of your health so um thank you so much for being here and please please make sure you subscribe to my channel and also share this video with someone that you think might benefit from it and like i said remember make the bank your friend don't see banks as evil okay if you if you're friends with a bank and the bank bank is your friend you will make so much money you'll be wealthy okay so that's my message today uh thank you very much for all your support and for subscribing to my channel and i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye